Good morning and welcome. Um, before we light the Advent wreath, I'll sing two verses of Abide With Us, Emmanuel, and then please join me with the refrain, and then we'll sing one more refrain after the wreath is lit. Today, we continue our tradition of having parish members, parish families, represent us in lighting the Advent candle. Today, we have the Liz and Ryan Davis family. We light the candle of forgiveness. In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Let us pray. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to join us today for the second Sunday of Advent. We also welcome all those who are watching us live stream today, as well as those who will watch us later in the day record it. Again, we thank you for being with us as we celebrate this Advent liturgy. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, 
Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is exp expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings, Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock and his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. 
Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass, pass away with a mighty roar and the elements will be dissolved by fire and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire? But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, in last Sunday's homily, I suggested that we make hope the focus of this Advent this year. Today's Gospel introduces John the Baptist. John is also called the precursor, which literally means to run before. This title comes from the beginning of today's Gospel, quoting the prophet Isaiah. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. Today's, since today's gospel begins by quoting from today's reading from Isaiah, we have to understand John's mission and ministry in light of Jesus' charge to Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. 
speak tenderly <clears throat> to Jerusalem. In other words, although John preached a baptism of repentance, his announcement of the coming of Jesus was intended primarily to comfort and to give hope to God's people. Last Sunday's reading from Isaiah ended, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. In his first reflection for this year's best advent ever, Matthew Kelly reminded us that we need to check our connection with God. When we get disconnected from God, we get disconnected from ourselves. When we get alienated from God, we get alienated from ourselves, from our best self, from our truest self. Because you can't be the best version of yourself, you can't become a better version of yourself separate from God. To the extent that we are connected with God is the extent that we are connected with ourselves and becoming a better version of ourselves each and every day. God is the potter, we are the clay. Some people would have us believe that the pandemic is evidence of God's judgment on us. However, concerning the pandemic, Pope Francis prayed, you are calling on us to seize this time of trial as a time of choosing. It is not the time of your judgment, but of our judgment a time to choose what matters and what passes away, a time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It is a time to get our lives back on track with regard to you, Lord, and to others. God is the potter, we are the clay. We allow God to shape our lives to the extent that we use this pandemic to re-examine our priorities. In other words, I think the Pope would argue that the pandemic is a call to conversion. The Greek word for repentance or conversion is metanoia. The word metanoia implies a complete turnaround of one's life. However, the root of metanoia suggests that metanoia represents a change in the way we see or a new way of seeing. In other words, if we undergo repentance or metanoia or conversion, as John and Jesus use these words, we're going to see all of our relationships in a new way. For example, we will see God as a loving father and ourselves as his beloved sons and daughters. We will see others as brothers and sisters in Christ or brothers and sisters in the human family. We will see the world and our bodies as gifts to be cherished. We will see ourselves as created in the image and likeness of God, as temples of the Holy Spirit, but also as people who sin and need forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, this new way of seeing will lead us to live in new ways. We will love as Christ loved. We will love God first and our neighbor as ourselves. We will treat others as we want to be treated and not treat others as we would not want to be treated. We will make our own and live the attitudes and values of God and Christ, working for peace and justice for all peoples. We will strive to be the best version of ourselves. We will recognize and respond to God's call in our lives to serve him by serving others, especially those in need. We will respect and cherish all human life from conception to natural death. We will be joyful, optimistic, and life-giving. In other words, we will be people of hope in the midst of the coronavirus. Please stand. <clears throat> I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray that nothing may hinder us from receiving Christ with joy. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, and all priests during this Advent season, may Christ's love strengthen them as they lead us all in preparing for the coming of Jesus. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation, may we become dedicated to peace and justice for all the world. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those experiencing despair and need, especially during this season of hope and giving, may they be blessed by the generosity of others, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this community of faith, may the fruits of the Holy Spirit abound in our preparation for Christ's coming again, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, that God will bring healing to those who are ill, protection to those who are vulnerable, and insight to those working on treatments and vaccines, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our beloved dead, especially the victims of COVID-19 worldwide, Melanie Johnson, who died recently, and Sister Norma Rockledge, for whom this Mass is offered. May they be united with the Father and rejoice in eternal life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of power and mercy, open our hearts and welcome. Remove the things that hinder us from receiving Christ with joy so that we may share his wisdom and become one with him when he comes in glory. For he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, 
And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, 
and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
we are overwhelmed by your generosity during this difficult time. All of the tags from the giving trees have been taken. Gifts are to be returned back here to the church next weekend or to the parish office no later than 3 p.m. on Monday, December 14th. If you missed getting a tag and would still like to help, $25 gift cards to Kroger or Walmart will help us to meet the needs of those who have asked for our help. They may be placed in the collection next weekend, marked to the attention of St. Vincent de Paul, or dropped off at the parish office anytime next week or this week. There are still a few Advent reflection books. If you did not get one last weekend, please feel free to pick one up today. Members of the Ladies Club will be at the church doors today as you leave collecting to help offset the costs of Christmas decorations. Masses on Tuesday, the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, will be at 9.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. And please join the Parish Life Commission immediately following Mass this morning as we host Silly Safaris, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ryan, and his live reindeer, Clarice. They will be here until 12.30 p.m. Don't miss this opportunity to get into the Christmas spirit. As was announced, Tuesday is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Normally, this would be a holy day of obligation, but because of the dispensation, of course, none of us, none of you are obligated to attend Mass. As was said, the Masses will be at 9.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. The 9.30 a.m. Mass will be live streamed. Also, again, it's worth noting that this Mary as the Immaculate Conception is the patroness of the entire United States. So it's a good day, you know, to celebrate Mass either by coming or by uh, watching online. We continue today our um, training of new servers. Today we have Luke Bruno for his second time, and he's ably mentored by Rihanna Holiday, and uh, they did a great job. And again, as was announced, don't forget the uh, live reindeer out in the parking lot after Mass. Uh, I've never seen, I've never been close to a live reindeer, so, you know, I don't know about you. <laughs> Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth, and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glor glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing Maranatha, Lord Messiah, verses 1, 2, and 7. <laughs> 